Well, this is your short game show. We're going to talk some about pitching, some about chipping, some about putting. Um, why don't we get going with a with a pitch for our first shot today? Um, we've probably got about a 40-yard shot here. And Talk us through how you do that and maybe some of the changes you made in your career, please, eh? Uh, Will Martin, and I, I used to have kind of an erratic pitching game. Uh, I used to get the club a little vertical going away and came down. I think it was a result of... You know, the clubs we grew up playing, I had a 56-degree wedge with 14 degrees bounce, and that's essentially what we all grew up with as kids back in the 60s and 70s. We didn't have anything 60s or 58s. I have a 58 here with 10 degrees bounce, uh, a little more uh, simple to play from a shot like this. And I started working with Dick Harmon in 1985, and he changed my pitching game, essentially got me taking the club a little bit more to the inside. And then if I wanted to control the height, all I had to do was use my right hand. If I wanted it under, I'd throw the club, the right hand under to put the ball up in the air, a little more flat to hit a, a medium height chip, and then a little bit more on top to get the chip to stay down. So that was what I did with the pitches you know, was really control the height and the distance with my right hand. Now, now, following Dick Harmon's wonderful advice, with the with the shot you were about to hit, would you have a practice swing or two and put that? I may have just there? feel the body. I I do one little practice swing and just kind of feel nothing, you know. And I choke up a little bit to be sure I've got the club head speed that I want. But uh, I try and have my weight a little bit more on the left side, so I just get a feel for where the ground is more than anything else. Because you never got a, the same lie every time. The ball can be this is a little bit downhill here, so it gave me a tough pitch for starters. But uh, a little bit downhill, I've got to have my weight a little further forward, swinging down the hill. Well, let's see. Um, let Let's go high, medium, low with those three right hand moves, if you would please. All right. So the the high one, we're going to take it back a little to the inside, like I was talking, and then throw the right hand underneath, which throws it up in the air. So. Well, I think we've got that one. That one worked okay. Yeah. So so plenty of club head speed in that one. Speed yes. means spin. Yep, and then if I wanted it kind of medium height, the, the right hand wouldn't go quite as much under. That one sounded very good. And then if you wanted it a little bit lower? A little bit lower, probably move it back just a hair and let the right hand just come a little bit more on top, and that will keep it down a little bit. Very good. You, you mentioned it almost in passing, but I think it would be important for the viewers to, to notice. You really get the hands way down on the grip, don't you? Pretty well, I do. I, I do. I think that the, the closer the hands are to the end of the grip, the bottom of the grip, the more, you, the more club head speed you're going you're gonna to produce. And uh, speed in, in the golf swing is always your friend. So you've got to have speed here to keep things going, keep it accelerating, and make good contact and put a little bit of spin on it. Did you always use the sand wedge, or would you vary the clubs that you would hit to round? I think it, I would vary the club really depending on what shot I had. A lot of times if I had this shot, and it was you know quite a bit longer, and a lot of you know the pin was at the back of the green, I might take a 52 degree and play that medium shot and let it just chase out a little bit more. Well, that's terrific. Go on, hit me one more if you would, a mid-height. All right. A little tribute to Dick Harmon this time, hey? Uh, a little mid-height, just ball kind of medium forward. Inside, underneath. You know, as we close this segment, I want to just say that watching you, watching all you good players I've had the chance to be around, it's fascinating how much you look at the target, you dial in the distance, something that I think most amateurs should do.